So, hello and welcome to our 14th lesson in our study of functional analysis. So, in this lesson, we will talk about continuous linear operators or bounded linear operators. I'm Wade Okran Randolph, a final year student of mathematics, KNUST. And I'll be taking you through this lesson. So, let's take some definitions. So, in functional analysis and related areas of mathematics, a continuous linear operator or a continuous linear mapping is a continuous linear transformation between topological vector spaces, right? So, we said a topological vector space is a vector space such that we have a topology defined on it, making scaling and translation continuous, okay? And we know what linear transformation is. So, if we have a continuous linear transformation between topological vector spaces, then we have what we call a continuous linear operator. Okay. Then, for the bounded linear operators, in functional analysis, a bounded linear operator is a linear transformation between two topological vector spaces, X and Y, that maps bounded subsets of X to bounded subsets of Y. Okay. So, formally, if X and Y are normed vector spaces, which is a special type of a topological vector space, then we say L is bounded. So, you could see the L here was a linear transformation. So, this linear transformation, we say it is bounded if and only if there exists some real number m greater than zero such that for all x in big S this relation holds. Okay. Alright, so in simple we can also write it this way. So if this relation holds then we say that um I'm coming So if that relation holds, then we say that L is bounded, okay? Sorry for the small break. Okay, so the smallest such M denoted by this is called the operator norm of L, okay? All right. So operator norm is a norm defined on the space of bounded linear operators between two given normed vector spaces. So now let us take examples of continuous linear operators. So the linear operators that we have, which of them are continuous or bounded? So any linear operator between two finite dimensional normed vector spaces or spaces is bounded. All right. And such an operation may be viewed as multiplication by some fixed metrics. So another example is many integral transforms are also bounded to linear operators. Then the Laplace operator is also bounded, okay? But note something, the differential operator is not continuous or bounded. And we are going to prove that in our next video. <coughs> so now let's take, let take a theorem. So we see let this here be a linear functional, right? Then the following are equivalent. T is a continuous linear operator. That's the first one. The second one is T is continuous at the origin. And the third one is T is a Lipchick map, right? Or T is bounded, okay? So we are going to prove this theorem. And in doing that, we would want to show that I implies, implies I, I. I, I implies I, 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 and I, I, I implies I, right? So we are supposed to go through these three parts in a proof. So to prove this theorem, we have to show that I implies I, 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 I implies I, 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 and I, I, I implies I, okay? So let's take the first part. To show that I implies I, I is very 
simple okay this is trivial because you can see that in i you see t is a continuous linear operator in the i i says t is continuous at the origin so t is a continuous linear operator means that t is continuous everywhere on which the origin is part so that means that since t is a continuous linear operator then indeed t is continuous at the origin so that's the proof for the first part you see it's very simple so we say that this is trivial because in i t is a continuous linear operator so it is continuous on the entire space where the origin is part so what is going to give us a bit of a work is the part two the second part to show that i i implies i i i that is if t is continuous at the origin then t is a left check map or t is bounded okay so you know from definition for t to be bounded right that means that this relation should hold and this is the same as you know when we we can write t of x minus t of y as t of x minus y then we have this and when we let z to be equal to x minus y then we have t z less than or equal to the norm of z right so this is the condition for t to be bounded or elliptic right and we want to show that if t is continuous at the origin then it is elliptic right but we want to prove this by contradiction and we also assume the contrapositive of the statement right so if you want to show that i i implies i i i if we take the contrapositive of this it will be not i i i the negation of it implies not of i i right so this is what we want to show and we want to show that using the proof by contradiction so you realize that the contradiction of our statement here that the condition for t to be bounded or elliptic is for us to have greater than here instead of the less than or equal to right okay so we want to show that one implies t is not continuous at the origin so you could see we have this here right okay so for an observation we are going to assume when zn is not zero right when it is non zero okay so this was a relation we had so we've written that one here so when we divide through by the right hand side we would have this okay then we can write this here we can put this one inside the norm and we have 1 over n norm of zn times t of zn greater than 1 right then we can bring everything that we have here into our t and you have t of 1 over n dot zn then over the norm of zn okay then you could see that the norm of zn over there like z and over the norm of z and the norm of it will give us one and this is similar to finding you um, unit vectors and the length of any unit vector is what one all right so z n and z n so that means that this one here is going to give us one and since it's going to give us one it means that everything here is going to be so let us represent u n to be everything that we have here we are going to have 1 over n times 1 right which is equal to 1 over n because the whole of this we know is 1 so when you find the limit as n approaches infinity of u n we call to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n and the same as 1 over n then n over n so 1 over n over 1 as an approach infinity we get 1 over infinity over 1 which will give us 0 over 1 which is 0 so that means that the limit as n approaches infinity of u n is 0 and that means that everything that we have inside here is 0 
right and you know we are saying that this year is greater than one but you can see that we had zero and zero greater than one is false it's not true because zero is not greater than one so it means that there is a contradiction right to us assuming that um t was not elliptic right so it means that if t is not elliptic then it is not continuous at the origin because you could see that when we assume that t was not elliptic then we had a contradiction which means that if t is not elliptic then it is not continuous so it implies that if t is continuous at the origin then it is elliptic right so this is a proof for the second one then now let's go to the third one which implies which is the third one implies the first one so here we want to show that if t is elliptic map then it is a continuous linear operator okay so there is a simple way to show this and that is from definition so from definition when you say a function is elliptic then it means that that function is uniformly continuous and when it uniformly continues, it means that it is what continuous. So that means that yes, if it is elliptic, then it means that it is what continuous. Okay. So that's the first way you can do. But another second way we can prove this is to use definition. Okay. So from the definition of uniformly continuous function, we know that for epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that this relation holds for all this right so what we do is i want to choose um epsilon to be equal to we want to choose delta to be equal to epsilon over l okay so you see from the definition of a bounded linear operator we said that an operator is bounded or is elliptic if this relation holds so here we are assuming that yes it is elliptic so you want to show that if it is elliptic or if it is continuous then it means that if it is bounded then it means that it is continuous right so here we know that it is bounded or it is elliptic so you want to show that it is continuous so we choose delta to be equal to epsilon on l right so you see we had this here is less than l less than the norm of x minus y right but this here we can see that here and this is less than what delta and delta is equal to epsilon over l so that means that instead of this we can replace it with epsilon over l and epsilon l will cancel l and we'll have this relation here and this shows that yes if it is bounded or elliptic then it is continuous okay so we've been able to also show that i i i implies i so we've been able to show for all the cases and this is a proof to that particular theorem okay so thank you very much in our next video we are going to show that the differential operator is not bounded and we will also show that when you put the infinity norm on this space it is indeed a norm and i also take you through one proof which shows that i think a b plus c d is less than or equal to root of a squared plus b squared times root of c squared plus d squared okay so we'll be doing these in our next video so thank you very much and see you in the next video